the meeting to order for Wicomico <coughs> County Legislative Session 2023-12 for June 20th, 2023. Those who'd like to stand and join us in the Lord's Prayer and Pledge of Allegiance, please do. <coughs> Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Obtain a motion from council to approve the consent agenda. So move. Second. Second. Any corrections? Discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the consent agenda is printed. Say aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion is carried. The consent agenda is approved. Now also on the agenda we have the certificate of recognition of the Parkside High School baseball team uh, for winning the uh, state 2A championship, which is absolutely great, and the uh, Paul Farmer uh, sportsmanship award, but they could not be here today, and uh, they're coming in July, correct, Ms. Hurley? That is correct. Yes, okay, so they'll be here in July, but we do have um, proclamations to read uh, for three other students. Uh, we have um, Jeff and Joe and uh, Josh are going to read these. Uh, the first one is for Kareem Camandego here. No? Okay. Um, how about Haley Elliott? No. She's in basic training already. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And then we have uh, Jordan Dickerson. Okay. Um, if we would, uh, if we could each read the proclamations at the podium, if you don't mind, um, in that order, so that at least we can present it publicly, even though they're not here to, to accept it, and we can certainly get it out to them anyway. Always important to recognize uh, the good things that happen. So uh, this certificate is recognition to Kareem uh, Camadiego for winning the Boys State 2A Pole Vault Championship in both indoor track and track and field. Uh, if you were here, we would say we congratulate him for his uh, incredible athletic accomplishments and signed this day by the county executive and all members of the county council. Um, thank you, Kareem, for uh, great work, uh, wherever you are. <laughs> Look forward to seeing you. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Morning. Uh, this certificate of recognition is for Haley Elliott for winning the Girls State 2A High Jump Championship in both indoor track and track and field. We congratulate her on her athletic accomplishments done this 20th day of June 2023, and it's signed by the county executive and all the county council members. And Haley, thank you for your service. Uh, good morning. It's always a pleasure to recognize our students for their outstanding contributions and in getting involved. And so this is for from the County Council of Wacomico County, Maryland. It is a great pleasure that the Wacomico County Executive and members of the Wacomico County Council extend this certif certification certificate of recognition to Jordan Dickerson for winning the Boys State 2A Shot Put Championship. We congratulate you on your athletic accomplishments. And it's done on this 20th day of June, 2023, and signed by the county executive and the county council. Thank you. Uh, before we get to. Oh, Mike, there it is. Oh, yeah. uh, before we get into regular business, Mr. Hurley, I'd like to re represent or recognize uh, Dr. Michael Stouffer, Superintendent of Wakanda County Schools. Glad to have you here. Good morning, Ms. Hurley. Okay, good morning, Mr. President, Council Members, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the first item on the agenda this morning is a public hearing on resolution number 79-2023. This is recommending the approval for the sale of a land preservation easement from Aldous, Austin Meredith and Brooke Meredith 
For each of the public hearings this morning, a public hearing notice was um, published in the local newspaper and posted on the county's website. And we have Mr. Gary Pusey here, planning manager, if you have any questions. This time we open the floor for public hearing on resolution number 79-2023. If you have any comments you'd like to make in reference to this resolution, come to the podium, please state your name, your county of residence, and your concerns. This concludes the public hearing on resolution number 79-2023. Entertain a motion from council to approve resolution 79-2023. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Resolution passes unanimously. Okay, next is the public hearing on resolution number 80-2023. This is recommending the approval of the sale of land preservation easements from Quinn Johnson. Uh, at this time, we open the floor for public hearing on resolution 80-2023. If you have any comments you'd like to make in reference to this resolution, come to the podium, state your name, your county of residence, and your concerns. Okay, next, this concludes the public hearing on resolution 80-2023. Entertain a motion from council to approve resolution 80-2023. So move. Second. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Seeing and all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Resolution passes unanimously. Okay, next is a public hearing on resolution number 81-2023, recommending the approval for the sale of a land preservation easement from River Riverton Farms, LLC. This time we open the floor for public hearing on resolution 81-2023. If you have any comments you'd like to make, come to the podium, state your name, uh, your county of residence, and your concerns. This concludes the public hearing on resolution 81-2023. Entertain a motion from council to approve resolution 81-2023. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Resolution passes unanimously. This time, I entertain a motion from council to, turn to adjourn from legislative session to convene as the local board of health. Move. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Temporarily adjourned from the legislative session. We now are convened as a local board of health. First uh, item on the agenda is the report on the health of the county. Mr. Matthew McConaughey, our local health officer. Pleased to have you here. I'm pleased to be here. Um, Health of the County, I'll just uh, overview our, our services and everything that we've accomplished through this year, uh, and then I'll get into the septic permitting update for you all. Okay. <clears throat> um, as far as COVID, um, we have had 25,145 cases um, and 367 deaths that have occurred here in Wacomico County. Um, the federal public emergency ended 5-11-23, what this means going forward. Vaccines would still remain to be covered for now. Insurance companies are not required to waive costs or provide free COVID-19 tests. Uh, treatment will remain covered for now. <clears throat> National and state reporting will change to weekly reporting. Uh, positivity rate will be eliminated uh, as the CDC cannot require the reporting of negative test results moving forward. And the community level and community transmission metrics by the CDC will be discontinued. Uh, flu, we had an early surge in hospitalization starting in late October, early November. Um, the week ending uh, June 3rd, there were 72 total influ influenza deaths in the state, four of which were pediatric. 24% uh, of the county residents were immunized against the flu uh, compared to 30 statewide. RSV uh, trended higher in the early fall but also started to level out at the beginning of the year. Uh, there were no RSV hospitalizations in the state um, as of week ending May 20th. I have a question. Uh, yes. Why doesn't the state release uh, information on the county level? Uh, it's, uh, it does, it's just based on the number. So if there's a small number, it could be um, just kind of like releasing who has probably been it in those data statistics. Does, did that make sense how I stated? it? Okay, so say there's only been five cases in the county. Well, you know four of those people, so it, it 
it identifies them. It can be identified. So they did identify the, the data and they set a limit or a threshold amount on how many then there needs to be in a county before you can report that number. Okay. Thank you. Uh, as far as overdoses, um, we receive information uh, through MDH vital statistics, um, and we also receive a rolling uh, count from the OOCC or the Opioid Operation Command Center. Uh, this data is subject to change uh, based on verification through hospital records. Um, through, for the 12 month period ending in January of 22, there are 49 fatal overdoses in Wacomico compared to 41 for the 12 months prior. Uh, for those same time periods, non-fatal opioid related ED encounters were also down over 20%. Uh, fentanyl continues to be the key driver of overdose mortality in the Maryland Wacomico County. In 22, fentanyl was involved in 80% of fatal overdoses in the state. The COAT team, uh, that's our community outreach addictions team uh, through the third quarter fiscal year 23, 64% of COAT teams clients have been linked to treatment and 92.3% of clients are still in recovery six months after their first encounter with COAT. So this is a great program and we're looking forward to continuing on with this. Um, Xylazine continues to be detected in the drug supply in Maryland. Uh, this is a veterinary tranquilizer that is added to fentanyl and or heroin to extend the effects of the drugs. Um, xylazine was implicated in one out of every five overdose deaths in Maryland, up from only 4.3% in 2009. you noticed any of that uh, in Lycomico County? Have we noticed that? Uh, I think it is has been a presence. Um, we're looking for our um, our CIT team and others to bring in our HIDA, regional HIDA representative to give us a, a more complete update on the substance and uh, analogs that are being recorded in this area. So I can provide more information um, and hopefully maybe next month if the HIDA representative comes. That's the drug they referenced as, like the zombie drug? Yes. Where you see just people just yes, standing still in the middle of the street? Yeah, yeah that is correct. Mm. Um, and Narcan will not work on the xylazine alone, um, it, but it's usually used in tandem with fentanyl. Um, so Narcan should always be administered, um, and it will have uh, some effect on the fentanyl, just not the xylazine. Um, access to care um, during COVID public health emergency, uh, we allowed for increased enrollment. Uh, Medicaid, um, Medicare is becoming uh, eligibility reviews are being hosted again. Um, the state estimate that roughly 80,000 Marylanders will not qualify for Medicaid at renewal, or about 4.5 percent of those currently enrolled. Um, extrapolating that data down, there's an estimate about a potential of 2,000 red residents of Wacomico County may lose coverage over the next year. Um, the Community Health Indicators Report, um, this is high level debt population health reports. Um, so the highlights um, were able to include fresh youth risk data. Uh, COVID-19 was third leading cause of death in 21, but still exceeded by heart disease and cancer. Uh, life expectancy is now 76.1 years in the county. Uh, that's 2.5 years less than the state, uh, which has also seen decreases. Cancer incidence for colorectal and lung and bronchitis is decreasing. Uh, cancer mortality for all sites is also decreasing. Diabetes prevalence continues to be an issue for the county. Um, up to 21 or up to 12.1 percent in 21 is the seventh leading cause in the county. Uh, teen birth bursts up again in 21, um, and the rates among Hispanic teens are six times higher compared to the white teens. Um, black uh, non Hispanic mothers are more likely to have a cesarean delivery and have infants that are preterm with low birth weight. 
our youth risk behavior survey, uh, survey administered every other year in Maryland to public middle school and high school students. Um, the last robust survey was conducted in 2018 due to COVID. Um, we have seen some positive trends. The current, uh, those who currently smoke cigarettes has decreased. Um, it, now reported 5.7% compared to 12.7% in 2014. Um, electronic cigarette or vape use has also decreased 18.1% uh, compared to 24.4%. Is that maybe indicative of a possible national trend or is that? I think it is and it's also with the implementation of the federal law of 21 for any tobacco or nicotine related products um, so i think the availability to acquire them has also de decreased for the high school and middle school population and do you know whether or not it's sort of like possibly not a popular thing to do anymore or um i don't, I don't know if that's here or there but. <laughs> it could be possible uh i would have to look at survey results or kind of do a focus group on youth or maybe the superintendent of the school system would be, be better able to address <laughs> that question being with the population probably the cost <laughs> that is well prices continue to increase especially with the the uh age change and maryland actually changed its rules right it, we it was 18 to buy tobacco products it's 21 lifted up to 21 yeah. was that three years ago yeah, it was during the pandemic, so it right around that time period. To see a seven or eight percent drop, that's pretty incredible. Yes, it is, and um, it is hopefully noticeable and a trend that will continue on. Um, and hopefully, we can make strides with the adult population as well. Um, sexual activity has trended down as well. Uh, currently sexu sexually active high school 18.9 compared to 30.4 and 14. Um, the number of uh, persons with four plus in a lifetime um, has decreased significantly as well. Uh, so these are positive indicators. Um, some areas for improvement, um, some suicide risk indicators have increased for both middle and high school. Uh, those that have reported sad or hopeless almost every day for two plus weeks in a row said that they stopped doing usual activities um, that has increased for high school from to 38.1% uh, compared to 14 where it's 27.8 and in middle school 35.2% compared to where it was 22.1% in 14. We've also seen an increase of those reporting that they have considered suicide for high school 23.2% uh, versus 17.8 and middle school 25.6% versus 20.6% in 14. Uh, we've also seen a rise that in the amount of attempts for high school and middle school, 18, 18 and 18.1 pers respectively. Um, Do you think there's any need and by Comico County for some type of a task force in reference to these particular, these are very scary. Uh, uh, this is very scary data. I think uh, there are some things that are coming about that can help. I think a task force may be beneficial uh, to address those. Um, and I know that the county hospitals have put a uh, priority involvement into uh, the pediatric uh, care, psychiatric care, um, and there's also um, state funds and availability coming down um, through the Maryland Consortium, uh, which I think would help with a hub and spoke model to maybe assist us this. Okay, I'm with Dr. Stowe for shaking his head. I know that. The Board of Education uh, is usually staying, I think, very much in the forefront of addressing a lot of our social issues. So hopefully that'll be a, a way to collaborate. And the, the, the consortium, um, the idea is to have them directly involved in all the services and care pretty much being provided to, to the school systems um, and just having uh, organizations and correspondence within the community that can help provide those programs and assistance. Josh? As you say, do, we, do you have any other data on, well, let me first say, nearly a quarter of our high school, you know, 
children or uh, or young adults uh, seriously considering suicide is incredible. That's you know that's not a very that's a kind of a damning uh, um, um, statement on our on our society. I guess oh, I'm also a bit concerned. Um, we did see numbers a couple of years ago that the um, among um, suicide for adults agricultural community was um, had taken a leap uh, quite dramatically it actually um, it was like a 60 percent increase and of course we were one of those areas I don't know if you have any data on adult suicide <clears throat> I do know enough uh, folks in the last couple of years who um, un or, uh, unfortunately went down that path uh, but uh, we are strong we don't have been a traditionally strong agricultural community I don't know if you know anything yeah. there but um, that is definitely something I can look into. There's probably more uh, data and statistics I can even just pull from the county health rankings. I don't have that uh, fully printed out. I just had a cover sheet uh, to discuss some of the highlights and uh, negative trends. Um, but I can definitely look at that. I think it's also important that we note that the update to the suicide number, the 988, I believe is what it is now, um, where you can quickly contact with somebody um, for service or to talk through something, um, mobile crisis, um, things like that, that we can provide um, for an individual. Hopefully we can do that because you know, the health department has such an excellent reputation. We did an outstanding job when, with COVID and with opioid alone. Uh, you know, even our COPE program, which you mentioned earlier, that was recognized by the state of Maryland as, as and, and, and they used it as a template for other counties. It was that, that uh, forward thinking and that progress and that successful and the you know, economica goes purple so we've shown honestly that when we try to um, address a particular issue in the county we can certainly uh, make a difference so um, be, be anxious to see how we can work with this and that's something uh, we can discuss um, and I can work with the superintendent on uh, potential things that we can do to help and uh, give some guidance with the hub and spoke and the consortium going forward on how to address some of these issues. Okay. Um, as far as our community health improvement plan, um, uh, our four priority areas, we have access to care and health equality, behavioral health and crime chronic disease and wellness um, in our health equality and access. We're looking to increase equitable access to health care and provide education and promote awareness of health equality, including policy recommendations. Um, as far as behavioral health, um, we're looking to improve behavioral health through prevention, treatment, and recovery. Uh, so we're looking to reduce rates of suicide deaths from 11.7 11 per, 11 per 100,000 to 9 nine per hundred thousand population uh, reduce opioid overdose deaths um, strengthen the integrated behavioral health primary care model through academic detailing visits and care coordination with at least 15 individuals in the hub and spoke program um, and reduce the proportion of adults reporting poor mental health two or more weeks a month uh, to 12 percent so that we are making and have plans and goals to address the suicide um, issue here in the county. Mm -hmm. um, and then health ranking wise, some positive trends, uh, the county overall rankings uh, for 2023 was 17, which is the highest the county has received since 2015. And I think a caveat that may not have been presented before, but I believe it's not necessarily where we rank throughout the state it's how we rank against ourselves so that means the trend data from year to year um, because each each county has their own unique strengths and weaknesses so it's important to compare ourselves locally and not holistically across the state um, but we have had good trends um, preventable hospitalization the county has also decreased uh, down over 60 percent since 2020 um, and now we're lower than the state average um, some areas for improvement um, STIs continue to be a significant issue in the county the rate of chlamydia has increased 39 uh, percent uh, the rate did fall significantly in 2020 um, what we do still remain higher um, than the state average um, some additional highlights um, 
um, mental health providers. Uh, we we have a, a good portion of mental health providers ratio for the population. Um, and then, like I said, um, hospitalizations, um, and then some areas for improvement were the committee and adult obesity rates. Um, as far as some uh, legislative uh, session updates, um, the cannabis reform, medical cannabis stores will be able to obtain a dual license for recreational sales. Um, sale tax set at 9%. Adults 21 and older may possess up to 1.5 ounces of cannabis in two marijuana plants. Um, gender and affirming treatment, expanded procedures relating to gender affirming care covered under Maryland Medicaid, 988 crisis prevention, uh, set aside 12 million in the 25 budget to fund the 988 suicide and crisis hotline, as I referenced <coughs> earlier. Um, <coughs> telehealth, coverage of telehealth is extended through June of 25. This includes adult only telephone conversations between a healthcare provider and patient uh, must be reimbursed at the same rate, reproductive rights since the constitutional amendment to the 24 ballot to enshrine the right to abortion to the American Constitution. Maryland Health Benefit Exchange, um, Maryland Health Benefit Exchange and MDH will prepare a report by 1031-23 comparing options for affordable health care and dental coverage for state residents ineligible for the Maryland Medical Assistance Program. Um, the environmental health specialist uh, alters their education requirement for environmental health specialists, specifically that their bachelor's degree does not have to be in certain science discipline, as well as reducing the required number of science credits for hours from 60 to 30. This will hopefully assist with the recruitment of sanitarians across the state. Environmental Health System Support Act requires um, Maryland Department of Environment uh, to conduct a study with an interim report in 23 and final report in 24 on the staff needs for environmental health specialists and local health departments. This act will also require MDA to provide a study on the implication of delegating MDs, well and septic permitting authorities to the Maryland Department of Health. Uh, commission on Public Health Establishment established a commission to make recommendations to improve the delivery of foundational public health services in the state by assessing these capabilities at the Maryland Department of Health and its local health departments. Um, and one other one, um, starting effective July 1 of this year, um, is the House Bill 1080, um, which provides um, Medicaid service to non-citizen uh, pregnant or postpartum women, um, they can apply at when they have a positive test result and receive Medicaid coverage up to four months postpartum. Um, and it will be a re retroactive three months of coverage um, for the pregnant mother um, and the child would then be covered for one year um, after birth. And that is the health update that I have prepared. Is there yeah. any questions regarding that? Any questions? Yes, Josh. Just quickly, normally we have some statistics on alcohol, I guess, use. Is there anything, um, I guess, that came out of that or anything to report, anything noteworthy? Um, not that was noteworthy. Um, so that would probably mar mark it as continuing on as the same. I can go back and pull some statistics for that. I apologize um, for not having that available. Just curious. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else? I have a quick question. Do you have health nurses still in the health department? Uh, like community health nurses or? Yeah. Uh, we have community health workers and then we also do have nurses um, uh, providing family planning, um, vaccinations. Do they go out in the community, some of them? Uh, some of them do. Um, we do try and um, still do some community work as well. I see some of the issues that you, you're talking about. Um, I know years ago they used to come to when you had a baby they'd come to your house for six weeks but it seems like you, more of that would be um so that that's more helpful. toward our home visiting program home visiting yeah and you see the whatever's going on in the home yeah that you might educate the parent and, and we do have that we yeah. have our healthy families initiatives and a few others um so we do we do provide that that education and support for the new mothers yeah What's your uh, opinion? Some of some of these state bills on 
I find disconcerting to a certain degree. The two in reference to environmental health. Um, what's your take on the education requirements, changing the education requirements? It, from our perspective, it seems like it might make it easier for new hires. Um, I think it's fine. It th Basically, this one um, had a required, the, the change was you had like to have a lab and two different things. So you had to have a lab and say biology and uh, then also a lab in chemistry. Uh, well, now you could have two biology labs. You could take your entry level and then your secondary course and you have a lab in both and you would still qualify under these uh, stipulations. So I think it's a good thing and it's opening up the pool of applicants um, with, with expanding or reducing the, the requirement for that. Um, and it gives a more holistic um, approach where you can get somebody who may not who may have been in a different field of study but found their calling in, in the field. And the other one, I like, um, I really, uh, it's, it's sort of um, optimistic to see that the state is even taking this into consideration, recognizing the problems we're having with yeah. health services here, especially as far as um, permitting, et cetera, as, as you're very familiar with. Um, the second bill, I'm, I wish they could create a final report that was a little sooner than 12, December of 2024, right? Yeah. Oh, um, we, we do have some plans and I've been in talks um, I will be part of a metro panel talking about workforce uh, in the environmental sector coming up um, and then uh, that this overall thing we're not the only county that has seen issues There's mm -hmm. counties throughout the state that have this no. issue and I, th that's why I believe the requirements have been changed mm -hmm. and just trying to create a avenue where we we can successfully onboard and bring in uh, people into it as well as looking at the compensation level. I think that is probably another big study that or part of the study that it will look on. Okay, well, if you need if you need the council's assistance, we'd be glad in trying to help you um, develop some type of an advocacy group if you feel it's necessary. I know the Coastal Association of Realtors, you would have their ear constantly um, if you're looking for, you know, ground level support as, as well as, as any installers or, or contractors, um, you're new to the area. <laughs> so we'd be glad to help you with any information, any contacts you might need to, to help assist when, the, because I'm guessing they're going to be reaching out to the local jurisdictions, yeah. I would assume, for assistance. Yeah. And I will say, um, I guess one thing, uh, we, we have plans to get in contact with the installers uh, here shortly because we'll be updating our... Uh, process for septic permitting application um, as a pilot through MDE, um, and it's more on the installer side. We're going more electronic um, formatted, so we'll just have a conversation with them coming up in the future. Okay. Great. A few, um, a few years ago, um, MDE, the health department, uh, held a public forum at this at our civic center and invited the public and the installers, anybody with any concerns, I'm sure the Realtors Association was there, to go over the issues that they were having. Um, I don't know whether you would be open to that idea or not. You know, you could hear from a broad range of people at one time. MDE could hear from them what their concerns are. So. Uh, that is definitely something we can look to do and have. Um, I'm hoping with uh, this new process that we can expedite, but I definitely plan to get together and it can be an avenue and opportunity to have that discussion. And that way we can go back and see how to better adjust our processes to better meet the community's needs. Speaking of process, I'll, I'll mention something. Well, it was two incidents that we had on the east side of the county. And I know you had a backlog. I understand you were short of help. But we had one gentleman or family waiting to put up a, a garage, pole barn, garage, whatever. They didn't need a perk. They didn't need anything done other than somebody to show up and say, you can put it here because it's not in the reserve area. Okay. It, seemed to, it seemed to take them like six months to get there to do that. I had another situation probably a couple miles down the road that where the perk had all been done 
everything was fine. All they needed was somebody to visit and make sure that the property had not been disturbed. And that seemed to take forever. That generated a lot of emails back and forth from those folks, the realtor, you know, and the health department, or why they couldn't just get somebody to say, nothing's changed, <laughs> you know. And I understand, you know, the backlog of, you know, doing perks and things like that takes time, but it seems to me like when you have something so simplistic as somebody showing up and taking five minutes to say, okay, nothing's changed or this is not in the, re in the reserve area and go ahead to make somebody wait that length of time seems, you know, that, that just says that, you know, you're not, they're not working. This was before you. Okay. So I'm blaming on you. It happened before you, but that's, um, seems to be something that needs to be addressed. And I mean, just, I don't know the situations personally, but you know, there are priority levels and yes, it may be an easy thing done, but when things are higher in priority, it's harder to get to something that's not, not as, um, environmental hazardous or things of that nature. Um, but we, we can definitely look on how we can improve the speed that we expedite and go through a uh, request. Ms. McConaughey, can you elaborate a little more on the meeting you're talking about with the installers? It, I can. Um, so it would just be meeting to go over and discuss the new process for the online septic permitting system that we're, we're piloting uh, through MDE. Uh, just to give them an overview of how they will then submit an application. We're hoping this will expedite the process. Um, we can do everything electronic instead of them having to come in and submit the paperwork and they'll get uh, the permit uh, electronically instead of having to mail it or anything like that. So hopefully cut down on some of the uh, days that, with mailing or things of that nature. Would would they still be able to come? I mean, you, you got to look they, at your they, installers. Yeah, your installers yeah, are they, aging. They will Some still, of them might will have still be able to come in, yeah. um, and we'll look to the eh, the future to hopefully be able to have um, a system uh, in our environmental health office where we could help somebody with doing an online application or anything like that, and providing that troubleshooting if need be. As far as the update on the septic permitting, um, I'll give an update. Um, so for the backlog, the ones prior to January 17th of this year, um, we have completed two since our last report. Uh, so, and if you look um, out of the 24 total open applications still, 20 are still in the hands of the owners. Um, and four are open applications for other reasons. Um, they may need a wet season or we haven't been able to get there to uh, do a site eval, perk testing, things of that nature. Um, really in regards to why uh, we're in the waiting period with um, the owners, it could just be their uh, funding issues, um, they may be reconsidering uh, what they want to do, uh, finding an installer. Um, but we have had one completed that we issued, and the owner did request to close that permit application out of the two that we've completed um, since the last report. Um, going forward, um, we have a total of 79 current applications. Um, we've completed 27 of those, um, and there's now an open, open applications of 52. Um, we've added seven since the last report, um, and we've completed four since the last report, um, and all four of those being uh, replacement systems. As far as land evaluations, we made a pretty significant headway um, since the last report. Um, out of 100, there's 118 um, current applications. We completed four. Um, the, the previous report, there was 91 applications received that the site visit had not been completed. Um, and now that's down to 78, so a, change, a significant change of 13. Um, and you can see we're working from the latest applications on down the list. Um, so that's how we're going about that. 
And who makes a decision or the determination, the determination if it, you need to wait for a wet season for a specific piece of property? That, that's based off of the soil evaluations in the well, the, the wells within the county, looking at that water table. So if um, a water table is higher, or based off of our historical data off those wells, we know we have to wait for a wet season in those those areas um, because if we would perk in a dry season, it may work and it may be fine. But once a wet, a wet season comes and the water table is high, then you would have contamination of groundwater through the uh, effluent that would be coming from a septic system. So you couldn't adjust that knowing the the um, water level. The, uh, we have to wait for the mm -hmm. for the wet season to properly assess because. The well may be here, and we're we're assessing it for a surrounding radius or diameter from from that that central location, but it ebbs and flows through each property. I um, mean, we can't verify or say 100% certain that just because this is here, well, you may be on an elevation rise or you may be in a depression in this area. We we can take a guess. But do we really want to guess with the with uh, somebody with an individual's health or with the health of the watershed? So if we go three years without a wet season, somebody has to wait three years to get a perk. That's correct, and that the is the science that, and technology that's out there. They can't they can't adjust that. That's correct, and that's based off of what Comar says, and we have to abide by the regulations. Uh, that is all I have today. Oh, I do have one more piece. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay. Um, uh, concerning the questions, um, we do have one new hire. Uh, they will start the six twenty eight. Um, what the other one declined the position. Uh, MD, e, MD, MES uh, funding. Um, they're currently funded through vacancies that we have through our vacancies of position so that's how how they're funded um no new funds have been allocated uh to the health department for this this has already been in our budget uh going forward we still do have some vacancies um so we may uh still offer for them to come and assist us um mes through the, this cooperation has, has done 36 septic permits and 27 site evaluations have been started um, with our assistance. So how many of us did 36? Uh, 36 septic permits have been completed. Through, yeah. That's, that's, I mean, yeah. that's pretty promising. Yes. Yeah. So um, we probably will continue on um, with this joint venture um, until we become fully staffed and can do the work uh, solo. How's that funding? Because I know it was 50. Uh, they thought it was 38. It was yeah, 28. Fun funding is 28, and we're lo looking at about a roughly a breakdown about 5,000 for administrative, and then the 23 will be the direct on-site working and, and everything. And with the with the allotment, will that send us through this year, or is it going to be? Uh, uh, we should be fine um, because this is all based off of our. Um, Vacancies. Va vacancies, so we should have the funds available to provide for that and additional. Um, and then there was a question about my thoughts on state requiring mound systems and holding tanks. Um, I, I think it's a needed thing um, because it, we're here to protect the environment and people's health. Um, if the mound system is a conventional system, um, it's just adding the additional layer of substrate to the existing soil level, which provides for the necessary percolation and diffusion of the of the runoff um, and holding tanks, and as unfortunate are, as they are, are our last option, and they are kind of time gated until city water or sewer can get to the, to it, or until a county plan comes into place that can handle it, or a new alternative solution um, comes available to be able to implement. Yeah, that's what we're hoping for because it's a hard uh, it's a hard one to defend from your perspective, 
when you see honestly what amounts to Joe and I visited a, a neighborhood a neighborhood in near Del Mar where the right near the entrance of this neighborhood they put a you know eight foot mound system in or six or eight foot mound system right in the front yard. Now, the individuals were, who, were, who we met with who lived in the neighborhood said, we know that his property value is now worthless. He will never get what he paid for for that house ever again. But not only that, but they were concerned about their property values since that was the first house going into the neighborhood. Like, who's going to want to live here? Well, I have to put in a mound system later down. The person buying the house eventually may have to do the same thing. Right. And will someone even, will a realtor even have any chance of going into that neighborhood with that with that hanging over their head? I will say it is a conventional system, um, and it is an option for places that have poor soil quality. Um, yes, they can be not visually pleasing, sure. um, but it is a functional system that works, um, and it's more based on someone's aesthetics if they don't agree with it and yes i do understand um i live in a neighborhood that has one does it personally bother me no it doesn't because i know they're doing what they have to to protect you know the community and it it's a better alternative than a pump and haul agreement it's just i think creates so much frustration uh, <laughs> within the community especially a rural community and not like the mound system, but the holding tanks when you're trying to sell a house and the next thing you know, all of a sudden $30,000 has been added to the cost and the negotiations. You yeah. think you have a signed contract and then all of a sudden the health report comes, health department report comes back and you know, it blows up a deal. Yeah. Someone needs $30,000 to put a holding tank in. It's not going to happen. That's, you know, I, I visit homes before they're sold sometimes, you know, in our, in our business and I, Tell the people before you sign a contract, before you even list your home, get your inspection done on your septic first, so you know what's so you know what's ahead of you. Um, but I, you know, the mound systems is interesting, and I understand how they work. But if they work, if they're this tall off the ground, correct, three foot, four foot, eight foot, six foot, why wouldn't they work if they were in the ground? If the dirt's removed and that type of soil was put in there. Well, that's the key. You're removing that dirt, so mm -hmm. you're taking away that that layer. So if you're taking three feet of dirt away, you're taking out the valuable material that's used. So it it's saying your septic can't work at this level, right? So you're making it sure to, that it works at this level. So even if you took away three feet, well, you just have to add three additional feet of the added material. Does that make sense? Well, they say they say that it's the reason is because of the soil. So if you yes. replace the soils, it's there with soils at work, and that's what they do a lot of times. Yes, but then you don't have the com the compacted material. It's like a fill, uh, so you, it's not compacted. It doesn't have the root structures um, from plants and anything like that, um, and it it's not not compacted to the degree that would make it a sufficient um yeah yeah i understand i understand what you're saying but I, I trust me I know. you know i talk to a lot of installers <laughs> and installers say it doesn't make any difference if it's this high off the ground or this high off the ground you know it all drains it all goes yeah. down you know and a lot of them are put in fields where there isn't root systems so that's you know so a couple of years ago there was some research being done to see if you could put native switchgrass over top of drain fields as a way for um, nutrient uptake, but also really good to hold the soils together for compa you know compaction in order to help better filter. I don't know where that where that where that ha where that went, but um, um, that was actually really beneficial, especially for the you know places like the Lower Shore. Our soils are so very different than the rest of the state. You know, it's just sand here; everything goes straight down. So um, that might be worth. I don't know if we can check into that. The other thing I'll say is just to make an important point: we should. You know, right now, the only thing that is preventing more homes in my district, you know, areas like if you know where, you know, where um, specific gravity and, and, um, and rise up coffee, all that area behind and, and the, that uh, um, it goes from Parkside to um, Bennett, you know, most of those homes, a lot of those homes all there in the present streets, they're all on septic system. They should be attached to, they should be into the city. Um, but the homeowners keep calling me and saying, hey, I want to get in, but I can't, I don't know how to navigate the process. So what we need to do as we continue to move forward is to, 
Um, yeah, especially it's expensive, especially a lot of folks have, have learned that as soon as they're going to sell their home, um, where they want to be in the city of Salisbury, but they just haven't been able to make, you know, it, it's a government issue of where two bodies aren't talking to each other very well. The more that we can, as we go forward and uh, uh, have a consolidated effort to try to make sure that we're hooking up septic systems into public sewer, um, I think there's a lot of homeowners, pardon me, there are a lot of homeowners who have told me specifically they would love to be in the city if they can. It's just, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's rules there. It's not as easy. So I'd love to see us continue to work well with our municipalities um, as well as we, you know, as we continue to expand out our own plans to hook up as many of these as possible. I think that's definitely something that can be brought up and talked about in the, uh, the sewer master plan yeah. that's going in the place now and how how that coordination and it, maybe your users got on how to navigate those issues um, for the community yeah, and I think we wouldn't mind seeing to pay for pay for service Josh we just don't really yeah. we just don't see the justification for the annexation <laughs> <laughs> no. in other words they want the benefits but not the cost right for those who want to annex, oh, it'd be boy. good to help uh, I do want to say, oh, we like to start something. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to say thank you too. This is the best report that we've seen to be Excellent. able to see detail and mm -hmm. exactly what's happening and to see it concisely, succinctly put down. Thank you very much for this. The and I will say you can thank my epidemiologist, Christina Gray, because she's the one that put this together for me. So she did a <laughs> thank fantastic you, Christina, job. Gray. Bring her with you next time. <laughs> yeah. I will. <laughs> Congratulations on getting bull lips opened. Oh. <laughs> As a, that was a that was a task. Well, we managed to uh, see eye to eye and follow uh, the regulations that were in place. So, <laughs> <laughs> Good. anybody else? Thank you, Ms. McConaughey. We really appreciate it. Thank you all. I appreciate Thank your you. time. Entertain a motion to adjourn from local board of health and reconvene as a legislative session of Wicomico County Council. Someone second. Second. In favor. Next item, on, Ms. Ms. Surly, thank you. Okay, the next item for business is resolution number 82-2023, submission of an appointment to the Adult Guardianship Review Board and the appointment of Marie T. Shea, RN, PhD, as a member of the Adult <coughs> Guardianship Review Board. This board reviews public guardianship cases every six months and makes recommendations to the court to either continue, modify, or terminate the guardianship. Entertain a motion from council to approve resolution 82 2023. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Resolution passes unanimously. Okay, next for your consideration is resolution number 83 2023. This is this is extending an audit contract buying between Wacomico County, Maryland and PKS and Company PA for fiscal year 2023. And we have Ashley Stern here. Um, with PKS and company, if there are any questions. I obtain a motion from council approve resolution 83-2023. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? The, Ms. Mrs. Stern, if you have a second. Or Ms. Stern. Morning. Morning. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. What's, what the, the term of this contract is a fiscal year 2023? It is, fiscal right. year 2023. Uh, normally, we have, um, I believe in the past, we've had three-year con three contracts. We have. But we're only doing a one-year contract this year. Yeah, for the time being, we're <laughs> just trying to do to extend the current contract for one year before we can um, ascertain what a three-year contract would look like. Okay. Um, any questions from anybody? Any comments? No? Okay. Yeah. All those in favor of resolution 83-2023 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carried. Resolution passes. Thank, Thank you very you much. Okay, hey, next is resolution number 84-2023. This is to engage the services of a professional recruiting firm. Um, as you guys are aware, the internal auditor resigned from his position in January, and we've at We've advertised this position on multiple job sites, such as Indeed, Tramper's Jobs, JobKey, ZipRecruiter, and many others. We also advertised it in the position, or we also advertised the position in the local newspaper and with the Purdue School of Business, with MAKO, um, and the position is posted on the county's website. Um, we are getting some applications in, but the Majority of them do not have the certifications that are required for the position. So I'm um, asking that we seek the help of a recruiter um, for this position. And we've done interviews. <clears throat> we have done two interviews. <clears throat> just uh, we just didn't think they were a good fit. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, enter entertain a motion from council. I've already done it. Entertain a motion from council to approve resolution 84 2023. Second. 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 Further discussion. I have a question. What's the cost? Um, it's going to be 20% of the annual salary. I mean, what's the cost of the recruiting firm? It, it, that's the cost. That's the cost. 20% mm -hmm. okay. of the annual salary. What, for the first okay. year? Or? It, it's just, you know, once we hire the person, whatever the annual, annual salary is, is 20% of that. And then there is a $1,500 set-off fee as well. No, wait a minute. 20% of the annual salary forever, as long as the person works here? No, no. just one time. One time. Okay. Just 20% <coughs> period. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was getting at. That's what I thought it meant. But I want to make sure. Okay. Any other discussion? <laughs> Thank you for your hard work on that. Hopefully you get somebody good. Hopefully we'll get in. Okay. Seeing none. All those in favor of resolution 84 2023 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carried. Resolution passes unanimously. Mm -hmm.